It didn't help, for sure. But uh, I think we had easier matches than him yesterday. So I don't feel that that was the reason that I lost today, or the reason that he won today. It wasn't a perfect schedule, but it was the same for both of us. Long day today. What did you do to recover from those matches yesterday, and how to prepare for training? Uh, I didn't feel tired today. You know, we had a long day yesterday, but I mean, we didn't start before 9:15, so I slept long. I went to the gym a little bit, had lunch, then slept again, and did like that. Well, not like a normal regime because you don't play too often, not before 9.30 at night, you know, on tour, but it, uh, it's not an easy schedule and uh, I feel that the conditions today were a little bit in his favor because it was played at night and it was really, really, really slow and as you know, Gael is probably the best defender on tour, so he was managing to recover some balls which were really incredible. Elaborate a little bit on Gail's movement and quickness and the challenge that presents to, to an opponent. I, uh, yeah, I lost to him uh, four times already. I think I won once or twice or three times. And I, I know what it means to play against a guy which is this quick. You know, today, even though knowing about it and even though my coach told me before the match the point is never over until you see the ball bounce twice even today a couple of times it happened to me that i play an incredible shot in the angle of the court and i just you know i think the point is over and he somehow manages to reach the, that ball but it was I, I, as I said it was night it was incredibly slow it was really humid the ball was really fluffy and the end so it was really hard for me to make any points you know from from the back of the court and plus i wasn't serving that well today which didn't help at all where do, do you more questions where do you see yourself going from here um in terms of performance and ranking what are your goals and priorities my goal is to finish the 2011 season in the top 20. i have a couple of points to defend I think at the US Open and then Davis Cup, but then at the end of the year, not that much. I feel like I'm playing well. Today, I didn't think the reason that I lost it was my forehand or backhand. It was more like lack of concentration. You know, I was getting so frustrated that I couldn't win three points off my serve and that I couldn't finish up the points as I wanted to and as I did in the previous two matches. So, I feel fit. I don't feel tired at all at the moment. So uh, I think it's going to come, but the goal is top 20 at the end of the year. Yeah, so, um, a few weeks ago, you posted a photo on Facebook of you and uh, Novak Djokovic. Uh, and I think you later took it down. Can you talk about how, how that photo sort of happened at East Asia? There was, uh, there was a bad joke. You know, we were really happy that we won Davis Cup. We were at dinner and, you know, it was like, a, I think it was a plastic gun. And uh, it was a bad and it was a stupid joke, you know, just at that time it seemed funny because we were thinking the, the joke was about how dominant Novak is that not, nothing can, you know, stop him this season, you know, but as you said, the next day I took it off Facebook and Twitter, but as I heard later, it was all over the internet and, you know, people were blaming me for, you know, thinking that I'm, I'm a... I hate Rafa or whatever. I called Noah and, and Rafa the next day. I spoke to them and you know they were fine about it. But you know they told me to be careful because it, the world of this social networking, it, you know, people can get things like this in in a wrong way. I still blame myself. I think it was a bad bad joke. But uh, anyway, I you can make a bad story out of anything if you want to. You know, I. Apologize to anyone who thinks it was like offensive to anybody on tour, but uh, you know the pictures were off the next day, and, and that's in the past. What is the dynamic among the Serbian players, the men in particular, who are so good? Do you take great pride in Novak's success, or is it a more competitive tension among you that makes 
I think it's something in between. You know, I don't take pride in no success, and uh, it's something like. I like having Victor and Novak and Nena as a part of my life and as a part of my tennis career because I feel that in a way they push me to be better. You know, if I see Novak being number one and Victor almost being top 10, I'm saying to myself that I want to be top 20 and maybe top 10 next year because if these guys can do it, I can do it because I'm looking what are they doing from the first row seat, you know. And I feel that's good. And I feel it's like in Spain, Rafa is doing the same. You know, all these guys are looking up to him and, you know, thinking if he can do it, why can't I do it? If I don't have, if I didn't have these guys and I was the only one, I would maybe be happy by being 30 or 40 in the world then, you know. But I feel they're pushing me to be better. Last question, please. Uh, Yanko, you're playing, uh, you're representing with those other guys that Serbia at the Davis Cup semifinals. I am generally playing good for Davis Cup. I like the team spirit that it has. You feel a little bit more relaxed because you know that if you screw up, there's the next guy waiting in line to, to help out the team. But. Um, uh, yeah, there is a, a good, good chance. It's not final yet, but we talked about it and we both agreed that I play doubles with Jelena at the Olympics and pro uh, mixed doubles and then probably even doubles with Nena, you know. So we still have to talk about it, but I love representing my country. I'm not a huge, huge pat patriot. I love Serbia and I love playing for it. Thank you. Thank you.